The cost of rising insurance premiums got you down? How will that impact your ability to buy a home? We have a special guest coming right up. Hello everybody, my name is Barry Horvath and this is Moving Forward TV with your local market update. And I am Dylan Guest and thank you so much for joining us today. So one of the crazy, crazy things that have been happening lately. Wait a minute, you said crazy twice. I did because it it's it is. worth repeating. Wait, there's a gas shortage? <laughs> <laughs> is that crazy? Wait, we're in the middle of a pandemic? I know. For the last year and a half? Tw that's crazy? Tw <laughs> you got something else? You know, almost almost that's normal, right? Yeah. You know, that, that, like, has all become normal. Other than the gas thing, you know, 12, 12 cars deep at, at Sam's Club the other day. Yeah. Well, 12 that's, cars that's, deep. What's that, going on? That's actually normal for Sam's Club. Yeah, I know. So you know. I, I usually go to Sam's. Well, I'm six premium. cars deep is normal. Premium at Sam's Club is 40 to 50 cents cheaper, and my car runs on premium. In fact, both of my cars. So 40 to 50 percent cheaper. 40 I didn't to 50 cents. 50 cents cheaper. So right? do the math. I have a 26 gallon tank. Blah, 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 wow. Blah, blah. That's like 12, 14 bucks. That's yeah, that that is worth waiting 12 cars in line. Yeah, but you know, All right. that's another story. I went to 7-Eleven <laughs> yesterday in fear that they wouldn't have it because I was like sucking fumes. So I wasn't one of those ones just trying to top off. I was literally <laughs> going to run out of gas, but that's normal for me. <laughs> I know. Wait till last It minute. is. <laughs> I'll get to it. That light goes on. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean anything. The siren didn't go off yet, right? You don't need gas yet. Anyway, that's not what our show's about, is it? <laughs> no, we're not talking about gas prices. We are talking about insurance prices. Yes, we are. We're talking about premium, but premium is gas, too. It go, so, it's gone up. I know. Everything's going up. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about, you know, people will say, well, what's the rates? What's the rates? Oh, my gosh, the rates are going up. They, they inched up an eighth of a percent or whatever. You know, what did that do to my payment? Well, you know $2. what? It, <laughs> to your payment, uh, you know, little tiny movements in the interest rates are not going to affect your payment as much as increases in real estate taxes and increases in homeowners insurance those two things are going to impact your monthly payment a lot more and it's so than a small increase in interest I rates i love that you say that because um, we have a house right now we're working on <laughs> and it's on the water and the premium it's an older home the premium for insurance is astronomical well they didn't get in the twos because those days without buying it they're just not there for the, the rates most part right now. Aren't in unless the twos anymore. Unless you're going to pay to a discount point, so the rate was a little more than they thought, and, and they're all worried about them. Like it changed your so, premium like thirty bucks. I'm like, yeah. You know what? You got like twelve thousand insurance premium, <laughs> that, and you're worried about thirty dollars in you know, I, you know your yeah, interest rate. <laughs> they don't. People don't get it though. They're all focused on the rate. They don't look at the PMI. That's, What's the MI insurance? That's when the it's point. Less than twenty percent now. That's the point. You have you to know. look at the whole picture yeah. when it comes to your mortgage payment, not just the interest rate. Well, what is everything else going to be? And something that we've noticed lately is insurance prices have it's been going up. Been I don't know about anybody up. else, but yeah. mine went up about six hundred dollars this year. Yes, which affects your buying power, and we'll talk more about that. How much of an impact? But, you know, instead of us trying to be the experts on insurance, which we're clearly not, <laughs> we thought we would bring in one of our most respected people in the community that knows insurance inside and out. Because um, we know her from, she supports our lunch and learns. Right. Um, Been a friend for oh, a long time. She's just a good person, and um, we thought, you know what, we get the best of the best on our show. And you're right. You know what? She is so respected in the community as well. So many people refer to her because she has been around a long time and knows what she's doing. Nope. Not aging you, girlfriend. Yeah, we're not calling you the <laughs> godmother. We're not calling you that. Um, but we thought we would bring on somebody who's very knowledgeable in the industry and maybe can share some insight what's going on out there. And and then we'll, you know, let you know what's the impact of this. So we have Carolyn Hirsch from Hirsch Insurance. 
There joining she us. is. And hey, welcome to the show. Yay. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Did you like that introduction? We really I've got, sound I've got lots to say about that. So <laughs> let me have the floor and we can get back to that. <laughs> Right, <laughs> row. <laughs> we put you on that pedestal so well deserved, though. Thank so, you. Uh, all we're really looking for is to get our insurance quotes just a few minutes quicker than the 10 minutes you normally take away. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. I'll do what I can. <laughs> yeah. So, Carolyn, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. You've been on before, and you're such an, um, an asset to the community and to the insurance industry as a whole with your knowledge and background and your experience. So. Can you tell us why are premiums going up? What the heck is yes, going well, on? Yeah. Thank you for the kind introduction. Yes, I've been an insurance agency owner for 18 years. I've been licensed for 31 years. And I always tell people I'm not a lot of fun at parties because it's the only job I've ever had since college. It's the only thing I know. So I feel like I kind of know it inside and out. Um, so insurance premiums have skyrocketed to a point I've not ever seen in my career before from a standpoint of annual increases. Um, the last few years, we've been quiet with multiple storms, but the storms that the state of Florida has experienced have been quite severe, quite catastrophic. And we're now just kind of catching up with trying to raise premiums to cover those deficits. Every few years, the insurance companies have to file for what they call reinsurance. So it's an insurance company insuring insurance companies. It's big money companies like Berkshire Hathaway and Lloyd's of London that are reinsuring the majority of the insurance companies. And of course, when they raise the reinsurance rates, there's nothing else to do besides to pass that through to the consumers. So, so can, the can cost of... I'm sorry, Barry, so go ahead. No, so reinsurance means if that insurance company can't pay they're kind of like the backup plan. Person. Correct. Okay. Correct. Absolutely. Yep. They're, they're, they're going to be what keeps that company financially solvent in the event of a catastrophic loss that their um, current assets can't cover. So there's most of the insurance companies in the state of Florida, there's only a few that don't, um, have reinsurance and they're backed by the state guarantee fund. Those are the ones that you're going to want to be insured with because if and when the big one comes through, there will be money to pay your claim. Does that make sense? Scary. Yes, that's scary that there might that there's some insurance companies out there if the big one comes, as you say, and they're not going to be able to pay your claim. Correct. Correct. Yep. Why are so those the reinsurance is going to be out there? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we have the reinsurance and the state guarantee fund. There, are, the um, the companies I represent are all part of the state guarantee and the reinsurance. So none of the none of the companies that I write business through would ever have the ability to go insolvent and walk away from your claim. There's gonna be money somewhere somehow to get your claim paid. And that's all we really want anyway. So last year, 105 insurance companies in Florida filed for rate increases. The average rate increase that was granted was 33%. So that was the average wow. agreed upon rate increase. Some of them took 100, 110% rate increase. We've seen some comp some premiums go from yesterday. I did one that was eighteen hundred, and it went up to thirty one fifty in one premium in one in one annual renewal. And that's that's not uncommon. Um, there was a company that came in a few years ago that was uh, not rate adequate. I think they were trying to take over market share quite quite quickly. And those guys have now probably gone up fourfold in four years. So that company is also ex experiencing extraordinary rate increases. So at this point right now, it, you're going to have a rate increase at your next renewal if you haven't already. It's, it's going to happen and it's going to be severe. Um, is there an end in sight to that? No. Or is it going to happen next year too? Because it, it won't happen next year. It won't happen years. next year. They won't. It shouldn't happen back to back because the reinsurance isn't applied for every twelve months. The reinsurance um, is applied for every twenty-four to thirty-six months, depending on the company. So when the rates, when the insurance company, and I'm just going to use, let's just say I'm going to use um, Allstate as an example. I'm an Allstate agent, so let's just use Allstate as an example. So we're gonna we're gonna file our rates with the state of Florida this year, we're gonna ask for reinsurance to be bid on next year. The third year we would then um, 
pass that on to our consumer. So it's going to it's going to be every couple of years that you're going to experience something like this. I don't think. I don't think they'll be as severe as they are that they have been because I think the cost of claims is going up quite a bit. I don't know that. I think we're going to be with the rates that they're taking. I think we're going to we're going to kind of um, average out and be okay for a couple of years. I can't ex- imagine that we would be able to take 35 to 40 percent rate increases back to back and have the state of Florida agree to it. We have to file with the state of Florida and at some point they're going to not allow us to take rates anymore. The flip side to that means there's going to be non-renewals. That means insurance companies aren't going to be able to stay on the volume of risks that we have and not be able to, like I said a minute ago, stay financially solvent. So if insurance companies are getting their rates approved, then we're going to be able to stay on all the risks that we have with rate increases. If it comes a point that we, as an insurance industry, file for a rate and we're not granted that rate because the state of Florida Department of Financial Services thinks that we were already rate adequate or what we're asking for is excessive, the only alternative then is to turn around and get off of some of the risks that we have there houses that have older roofs, houses that are too close to the coast that might have a wind exposure, things like that. So non-renewals have started coming through. Um, in the last maybe three months, we've had a company, couple companies that have come through with a few non-renewals, maybe 5% of their state of Florida book of business or something like that. that. Those are the only options, either take the rates or non-renew and get off the business. So really, as a whole, the insurance pool, it's actually beneficial in a way to consumers where they allow this increase so that everyone, because if you remember, I know you, you remember this, but remember years ago where everybody like flocked out of the state of Florida, nobody was writing insurance. So Correct. keep uh, your arm on your frame. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watch it. <laughs> hey, we like to have fun. So if you remember, we only had, well, what was it called? Uh, prior to citizens, J. J-W-U-A. JWUA, yeah. yeah J-W-U-A. Oh, J-W-U-A. Yeah. And that's the only policy people could get. And that, yeah. I mean, I get it. I mean, it's, let's, hear, let's face it, it's for profit for the insurance company. For sure. If they're going to lose their tails, why do they want to do it? Why do business where you can't be safeguarded and make money? So yeah. it so makes sense. So let me ask a question if I can. And no. I, sure. Oh, shush. Okay. She likes me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and... You know, maybe they already do this and I don't realize. So we, in my personal opinion, I don't think, you know, we're in the Tampa Bay area, obviously. I don't think we got hit with anything, like, really major in the last couple of years. Not really. That We had Irma a few years back that went up pretty much the center of the state. So I know, like, Orlando and, you know, like, smack dab in the middle of the state, they kind of got creamed a bit. So are their rates over there where they got creamed and where most of the claims probably were, are their rates higher than our rates? Or is it when they do it, they just do it statewide? So we're all kind of, even though we didn't get anything. So that's a really good question. They're done by what we call territories. And it's not by zip code. It is by territories. Um, So yes, Irma and Michael. Michael was extraordinarily catastrophic to the panhandle. Um, So those are the couple that we're catching up now on on paying claims and litigation and so forth. So when rates are filed, they are filed by territory. So the Orlando market area might encompass, uh, I'm going to get the the counties wrong, maybe Volusia County, Osceola County, Orange County, and those are going to be considered a territory. They may have a 17% rate change and that's what's filed for there. But the panhandle who has, let's just say, all of all of the panhandle of Florida may have had an approved rate of 45%. So they, when we file rates, they are filed with the state of Florida by way of territory, but it's not necessarily a zip code, um, east side of west side or not, um, east side of 19 or west side of 19 or so forth. But they are done by territory. Um, but the, the statewide average was 30, like I said, 33 or 35% last year that Um, It took, but yes, that will vary based on territory. Um, But that's also true for new business underwriting. If I'm writing a a new construction home in Orlando, the going rate might be $800 out there. But if you pick that up and put it in Pasco, Pinellas, Hernando, that could be a $2,000 policy because generally speaking, our wind, um, our velocity over here, generally speaking, should be higher. But we know these storms have done crazier things and moved in the middle of the night and and really wiped out the the Winter Park and Orlando areas 
So that, you know, of course, is unpredictable, but you would normally see higher rates in on the coastal counties than you would inland. Wow. So, you know what, and people are have to, if you are buying a home, let's talk about how this impacts the real estate market. Sure. If Huge. You, if you are buying a home today, whether you want it or not, if you have a mortgage, you must carry insurance. You can't let it lapse. You'll get forced place coverage. You have to have adequate coverage on your home. People will be like, no, I just, I'll just i self-insure. No, if you have a mortgage, you cannot. So the higher premiums, again, impact how much home people can qualify for. So uh, Delid and I ran average numbers and, you know, like, uh, you know, she said her premium went from like 1200 to 1800 That's $50 a month premium increase. Well, what does that do to someone's buying power? Well, if you take an average interest rate, that's probably $10,000 less of a purchase price that someone can qualify for that extra $50 a month because of the insurance increrease you know everybody's hung and that's up on just with that's just with $50 a month you know what Carolyn's talking about in some parts it's, yeah she's it's talking more <laughs> 13 yeah. or $1,500 a month so people could be losing 20 or $30,000 buying power on qualifying for a loan and that's a huge deal so um, what does that do does that make the real estate market plummet Probably not. I mean, you know, it's a supply demand thing. We have more buyers than sellers right now. So the market obviously should remain stable and continue to grow. Will it grow like it is now? You know, at some point it should level off, but there's no indicators that this housing market is going to die anytime soon with all the, the number of people. I'm sure, Carolyn, you're probably seeing more people and writing more policies than you ever have. So yeah, for people sure. People want to live here. So that's what's going to keep our market stable. So yeah. so two things I wanted to, to bring up. So number one, you had mentioned, um, Barry had, had mentioned, you know, if, the, if they let their policy drop, mm -hmm. they're going to have forced placed insurance. Can you tell people a little bit about what forced placed insurance and is? And how wonderful that yes. is? Because yes. I, I used to have people say, I'm going to keep it. It's cheaper than my other policy. I'm like, right. oh. And give them an example of how much it is. So forced placed insurance is just what Delenn and Barry were saying, where let's just say again, for lack of a better word, you're using um, the mortgage firm as your mortgage company. What a great idea. And that's a good idea, yeah. So the mortgage firm um, gets evidence that your policy is canceled or lapsed or non-renewed and so forth, then you elect not to get the replacement insurance. If they're going to what they call forced place, they are buying you an insurance policy that is only going to cover the debt owed to the mortgage company. So if you have a $200,000 house and $140,000 mortgage, if you have a fire, the only thing that that forced place policy is gonna do is, is pay off the $140,000 mortgage. You don't get your contents replaced, you don't get the equity in your house, it, they, they are buying the insurance for their own vested interest, which is the equity or which is what you owe the bank. So a forced place policy, 99% of the time is not cheaper because they don't want to be in the insurance business. The second thing is it's only covering the debt owed to the mortgage firm. It's not covering anything that you've put down on it, your contents. It's not giving you any benefit of any kind. It's just satisfying a check mark for the mortgage um, documents that you have. So forced place insurance is is... I've never seen it less expensive. You might have to jump through a few hoops to get private insurance again, like maybe have a 30-day wait or get some inspections, but you're also going to be covering that huge asset that you have, the, the equity that you have in the house that you've built up, and then also, like I said, the contents and personal property that you have in it. You know, I remember back in the um, crazy years where, Another you know, crazy time. oh my gosh, you remember the mid 2000s when the whole world was going nuts and all these houses, you know, prices were going up by the minute and then everybody started losing their houses, right? They started, mm -hmm. you know, foreclosures and short sales and things like that. Well, prior to the foreclosures and short sales, people were doing everything they can to try and hold on to their house, right? So they were, they stopped paying their insurance. They stopped mm -hmm. escrowing for their taxes and insurance. They stopped paying their tax. They stopped paying their insurance. Figure just to try and pay the principal and interest. Anyway, so a couple of people, I can remember they would call me, and I remember one person, her insurance went to, I think she was paying, it was a big house, you know, a decent-sized house, and I think she was paying something like at that time, and this is, you know, 10 years ago, um, she was paying something like maybe $1,500 a year, $1,800 a year, and it went, her forced place insurance was 6000 $6,000 a year yeah. for the forced place insurance. Wow. And, 
and they don't want to be in the business. Year. Yeah, yeah, they want to make it uncomfortable. So it's 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 not good, guys. Don't ever let your insurance lapse because you don't want your lender to do that. And the lenders have every mm -hmm. right to do that. They have to protect and, their investment. And hence why, from the lending standpoint, if you waive your escrows, meaning that the lender is not paying your escrows on your behalf and collecting them for them on a monthly payment, it's actually a premium charge. It's a one-time fee to that buyer at the time uh, to waive those escrows. So, and it's typically a quarter percent, meaning $200,000 loan, like in uh, Carolyn's example, it costs you $500 for the right to waive those escrows. And you must have at least 20% down in order to be able to even be considered to waive escrows. So, so keep that in mind. From an insurance standpoint, I would imagine it's easier, and I don't know if you have any, any input on this, easier to have it included in somebody's mortgage. I know from a, from a consumer standpoint, I always tell people, do you really want, you know, like an $1,800 bill to come in the mail, like, you know, three weeks before Christmas, <laughs> you know? <laughs> ah. no. So, you know, I, I, from an insurance... How's that going? <laughs> Okay, just want to make sure we're it down. From an it insurance makes it standpoint, is it better? You know, is it? Yes, because then I'm not a debt collector. So um, I, I waived my last mortgage for my escrow, and I looked like a rock star with my monthly mortgage payment. It was great. And then um, in November, my taxes were due. And then in December, like you said, I had bought my house in November was a big check and December was a big check for the homeowner. So I, I look like a rock star 10 months a year for a low mortgage, but anyway. No, it really does make it easier for the insurance companies to um, have them escrowed because we know and we're we know we're gonna get our money you know on time. We're not making late pay calls, trying to track somebody down who maybe fell and broke a hip or they're traveling and didn't get the bills. Um, our agency, of course, would do everything we could to prevent a policy from getting canceled or going non-renew, but a mortgage bill just is easy peasy. And um, sometimes it is frustrating to the consumer because if their taxes and insurance went up at the same time and you guys are going to redo their escrow, I don't know what you call it, but analysis. you rebalance it or whatever it is. Escrow analysis, yeah. Analysis, there you go. When that gets done annually, then sometimes we get the phone calls about, you know, the rates and so forth. And, you know, that's fine. We're, we're w willing to reshop it at any time. Um, but, yeah, from a, my standpoint, I'm not going to lie, um, having an escrow account is very easy. Do, they, do the insurance companies actually send a bill to the servicer when it's due? Yes. We, yes, we send out the renewal, which usually is a bill, and then we send about 15 days, we send another bill out, and everybody gets the bill. The, the owner of the house gets the bill, and the mortgage company gets the bill. Um, not unexpectedly, a lot of times servicing uh, carriers have changed, and so sometimes we are trying to track down who bought a loan or what the loan numbers have changed to, but that's easy. That, you know, we can do all day long, but yes, and then same thing, we'll get phone calls sometimes that say this is escrow billed, and we say it's a courtesy copy of the bill because, you know, we always say we don't care who pays the bill, just somebody give us the money for the premium for the renewal. So um, we do that as kind of a checks and balances that both the buyer of the home or the, the policy owner and the mortgage company both gets get copies of it. So, and then the other question I wanted to touch base on, if you can explain it, um, because another thing that I, I get a lot, so I, I'm always explaining right before closing, I explain about how we need a year's worth of insurance, because insurance is always paid in advance, and I always tell people, just like your health insurance, your medical insurance, your life insurance, every single insurance that you have, they all get paid first. So right. a year, and in the house, it's a year in advance, and it's always going to be a year in advance, and then we collect all year, so next you know, June or whatever it is, we have the money to pay it when the bill comes in. Um, the question I get is, what if I sell my house? So I buy my house in June and we do the first year's premium and then they're in there for a few years and it renews every single June. But what if they sell it in December? Do they get 100%, reimbursement? 100% prorated return of premium. The insurance companies do not, sh what they call short rate, which is penalized and hold back, um, you know, 25% of the earned premium. Um, again, the companies I do business with are 100% prorated, 365 days. You sell it at day 362, you get three days worth of premium back. So, if they, so yes. If a seller sells a home, do they need to notify their insurance company or is that yes. automatically done? No, it is. The, the seller has to notify us 
that the home was sold and we will get it canceled the day of sale. Even if it takes them two or three weeks or two or three months before they remember to call us, we'll backdate it based on the date of sale. But mortgage companies do not notify us when loans are paid off and they don't notify us when houses are sold. Right. So we've had... Um, a few times that we've billed mortgage companies and the bill goes unpaid and unpaid and unpaid. And we finally call the the, th- the uh, client and they say, oh, we paid that off a year ago. So we, you know, we didn't know that. So we just collect payment from them. So it is um, the duty of the policy owner, the homeowner to let us know when um, houses are paid off and or sold. So what do they Probably do? Probably a good thing for you? us to tell sellers yeah, at closing. I agree. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Do we, yes. they just send you a closing disclosure? Yeah, we would, we'd like a copy of the HUD. You know, if it's if it goes too far past, we can just pull the warranty deed off of public records okay. or the not, you know the settlement, not the settlement statement, but the other. Um, well, it's not de- called the HUD anymore, Caroline. <laughs> I was gonna say that shows how long she's been in the business too. <laughs> what do we call a settlement statement? Is that all it's called now? Called? Clo- yeah. It's called the closing Close- disclosure. Closing disclosure. <laughs> closing disclosure. Thank you. Closing disclosure. Yeah. So, probably, but or like I said, we can get the deed offline. You probably travel and have stewardesses wait on you, don't you? <laughs> If that's when she leaves her office. She's like, know. you know, the rest of us, like workaholic. She's pregnant yeah. as a cot there. So believe it or not, our our time is up. I mean, I know. that, you Crazy. know. So much information. We love yeah. having you on. We and, do. Um, we do. Thank you. Yeah, keep Carolyn in mind for your insurance needs. She's, a, as you can see, a true professional in the industry. And she can answer all your questions. And she does all lines of insurance. So um, here's her yeah. information right Aww. here. Um, Hirsch Insurance and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure she can write anywhere in the state of Florida. So I can. Yes. So thanks, yeah. Carolyn, for joining us. Thanks, Barry and Delenn. You guys have a great, I appreciate the honor of uh, being. Yeah, thank you. Honest. You're the best. All right, real we'll quick, talk to you later. We're gonna, thank we're you, gonna guys. you on what's going on in our community. We have our upcoming Lunch and Learn um, for June. And the date is, Delenn, do you know the date? I don't remember. I got it. I got it. I think it's June 8th. It is June 8th at 11.30. It'll be via Zoom. Don't miss it. Put it on your calendar. We always have a wealth of information. We're all about helping you and educating you, as you know. Um, Also, keep in mind, um, if you know anybody that is struggling still due to COVID, maybe they fell behind on their rent, we can help them with our charity of choice. Of course, um, our partner, West Pasco Business Association, Um, go to wpba.biz, that's wpba.biz. Just click on the heart tab, the heart program, and uh, we'll help you get some payments done. So great information today, Delaney. And if you're a landlord. And if do you're that a landlord, too. Absolutely. So thank you everyone for watching. We appreciate it. I know it was a great show and we appreciate Carolyn. Everybody keep us in mind. Yep. We are today and every day. Moving forward. Have a great week.